Which natural testosterone boosters actually work? The evidence. So you've heard all about numerous natural substances that are claimed to boost testosterone levels. Maybe an influencer thinks maca powder is a good idea and they happen to have a small startup dropshipping the stuff. Or perhaps it's a friendly online character that recommends Tribulus and has even gone to the effort of finding you a discount code. How kind. The big problem here is that almost everything we read and watch relies on expert opinion and personal anecdotes. These are just about the weakest forms of evidence going. So today's video is different. It focuses only on a much higher quality form of data, the randomized control trial. This video explores all the currently available randomized control trials and the data they've produced on natural testosterone boosters and their effectiveness boosting levels of testosterone in the human body. Because of this focus on high quality data, the video barely covers some popular products that remain unproven, whilst also throwing fair amounts of shade on a couple of bestsellers that our current evidence base seems to entirely disprove. Expect to learn about the two natural testosterone boosting supplements that have repeatedly proven their worth in randomized control trials, three that have flopped horribly, and two big names that remain on the sidelines with zero or near zero high quality trials to support or refute their claims. But first, a brief introduction to randomized control trials. These studies are designed to test the effect of one intervention, in this case herbal supplements, by controlling environmental factors and inbuilt biases to try and ensure only the presence or absence of the supplement influences the results. Randomized refers to using a random number generator to assign study participants to either the group taking the supplement or the group taking the placebo or sugar pill. This aims to randomly allocate an approximately equal number of individuals with characteristics that may affect the outcome to each group. Control refers to a strict set of conditions within the trial with potential confounding factors such as other supplements identified and excluded from the participants' diets and lifestyles. And lastly, these studies were all double-blinded, meaning that the participants and the research staff interacting with them were all blind to who was taking the supplement and who was taking the sugar pill to prevent biases whilst the experiment was running. First, the two supplements that have repeatedly performed well. Number one, fenugreek seed extract. This seed comes first because it's relatively extensively studied with six randomized controlled trials looking at 366 adult males ranging from 18 to 72 years of age, spanning trials lasting up to 12 weeks. Four of the six trials published showed statistically significant positive effects on total testosterone. On the other hand, two of the six studies failed to find any significant difference between the fenugreek seed extract group and the placebo group. One of these studies looked at 600 milligrams of fenugreek seed extract daily in overweight men in their 60s and the other at the same dose in normal BMI men in their 20s. So these two studies should temper our expectations, but four positive outcomes out of six is definitely reason for intrigue, optimism, and further research. Next, ashwagandha, also known as Withania somnifera. It's one of the most popular natural tea boosters on the market today, in part because of its storied history and claimed adaptogenic properties, which roughly translates to it being a chill pill. It is almost as extensively studied as fenugreek seed extract, with four randomized controlled trials having been conducted to date on its testosterone boosting effects. In total, they included 197 males ranging from 18 to 70 years of age, with trial durations lasting from eight weeks to three months. Of the four studies, three found statistically significant increases in testosterone compared to the placebo group, with around a 15% boost across all three. The fourth randomized control trial, the only one not to report a statistically significant difference, had a small sample size of only 19 males taking a relatively low dose of 240 milligrams per day. And it was the only trial that used ashwagandha leaf extract and not ashwagandha root extract. Though the difference between the ashwagandha group and the placebo group did not reach the technical limit of statistical difference, implying results are unlikely to be influenced by chance or other factors, the study group taking ashwagandha still improved their levels of testosterone from the baseline over 60 days by 11.4%. All in all, the initial data looks promising on this one. Next, the three big disappointments from the randomized control trials. First, tribulus terrestris. This one is a big one because lots of people have made or wasted a lot of money on this product. Currently, four randomized control trials exist, 
and none of them have shown a statistically significant difference between the tribulus group and the control group. These trials involved a total of 301 participants, used daily doses up to 800 milligrams, and ranged in duration from four weeks to three months. Overall, the data does not at present support spending your money on tribulus terrestris. Next, maca powder. Three randomized control trials pitting maca against a placebo pill have so far been conducted and published. The trials included 126 males ranging in age from 20 to 56. After three months of daily supplementation, all three trials failed to show any significant difference between the maca group and the control group in terms of blood levels of testosterone. So in short, there's no evidence to support using maca for your testosterone levels either. Next, Asian ginseng or Panax ginseng. This supplement is the most studied of the entire list, with seven randomized control trials having been published so far involving 512 total participants ranging in age from 18 to 79 and with studies lasting up to 12 weeks. Of the seven trials, only one four-weeker found a testosterone-boosting benefit, with six trials posting no significant difference between Asian ginseng and placebo. On this evidence, it's also not worth your money. And lastly, a little bit on a couple of big names sat on the sidelines waiting for further testing. First, Fadogia agrestis. This is the crushed stem or root of a particular plant native to Nigeria. In 2005, some rather exciting stuff was published in relation to a study on rats with erectile dysfunction. This has not been backed up with decent quality study in humans. So definitely something to leave on the watch and wait back burner and maybe adopt much later down the track if we get some good robust and positive human data. Next, Forscolin, or the blue spur flower. For this supplement, there exists precisely one randomized control trial in humans, looking at its effect on testosterone levels. It took 30 overweight or obese men and gave them twice daily oral supplements for 12 weeks. They found a statistically significant increase in serum-free testosterone, i.e. the stuff not bound to the carrier proteins, but only a smaller, non-statistically significant increase in total testosterone, so larger studies are needed on this one. The study also found that this supplement reduced body fat and improved bone density over these 12 weeks. This hints at a possible role for this supplement in the future, but it's certainly not strong enough evidence to advocate buying it, and a lot more high quality data is needed, including on individuals that are not overweight or obese at the start of the trial. So in summary, randomized control trials have found reason to be optimistic about the potential of both fenugreek seed extract and ashwagandha root extract as probably effective testosterone boosting supplements. They've found no reason to be optimistic about tribulus and maca and have mostly been disappointing when it comes to Asian ginseng. But almost all the studies so far repeat the same message. More data is needed to further clarify the effectiveness of these supplements. What would be particularly interesting is more long-term trials to see what alterations to testosterone levels are sustained beyond 12 weeks, some trials varying doses to get a better picture on advisable dosing protocols, more studies on female participants, and more on the safety behind these products. That's all from me for today. I hope you found this video interesting and informative. If you want more like this, subscribe to the channel and pop a comment down below.